Hi everyone, Chris here. If you're on an H-1B visa and you're trying to transfer jobs, then no matter what situation you're in, do not start your new job until you get an approval. So recently I made a video about how I did my whole job transferring process, but I didn't really talk about the immigration stuff because I knew that not everyone is gonna be um, interested in that topic and it's not even relevant to some of the people. But if you're watching this video, it probably means that you need some kind of work authorization to work in the United States. You could be a student on an F1 visa or a J1 visa, or you're somewhere like me where you already have and obtained an H1B work visa. Just a note of this video, I'm not a lawyer and I'm just sharing my experience on my perspectives and my opinions. So please watch this as entertainment only. And if you need some actual advice, you should reach out to an immigration lawyer. Even before we talk about the H1B transfer process, well, first thing is that there is actually no thing as an H1B transfer. What you're doing is you're just submitting a new petition for a work visa. The only difference is that just because you have already obtained and get, gotten approval for an H-1B visa in the past, you don't have to go through that entire lottery system again, and you have a much higher chance of getting approved on the new H-1B petition. Until a couple of years ago, H-1B transfer was a solid thing. Like the approval rate was 99% or even higher. So when people were doing their H-1B transfers, they actually never really thought of this as any risk. Fast forward a couple of years, now there actually is a very high chance of getting denied compared to a couple of years ago. So the process goes like this. When you get a job offer from another company, the legal team from that company or maybe an outside law firm will reach out to you and ask for all these informations for your new job. They will obtain all that information and then they'll get a document ready to submit a petition on, be on your behalf. Once they submit it, you will get something called a receipt. The receipt is from the government saying this person has filed a petition for a work visa. With the receipt, you're actually allowed to start working at your new company, meaning you can give your two week notice at your current company and actually say to the next company that I'll start working in two weeks. The problem is this, you can get something called an RFE. An RFE is request for evidence. Now the RFE, the, the chance that you might get an RFE aren't that high, it's still, it's getting higher every every month recently. It's almost hit something like 60% to what I've seen. Now, I don't really know who is getting these RFEs. I don't know if there's like some kind of thing that they're looking for. If there's a gap, the government can ask you for, for some evi uh, additional evidence. The problem with getting an RFE is that the moment you get the RFE, you have to file another package with a bunch of evidence that supports your claim and how your education is related to your new job and so on. That process can take months. And after you file that, you have to wait a couple more months to actually get a, a, a response from the government with an approval or a denial. So that could lead you to a lot of stress during that time because if you get an RFE and you have the slightest chance of getting denied, if you do get denied, it means that you can't go back to your old job because they will probably have terminated your previous H-1B visa. So now you're kind of in this uh, lingo state where you can't go back to your old company and you can only stay with your current company, but there's a chance that you might get um, denied from the government, meaning you have to go back to your home country. So that, that's just so much stress, right? And that's why I recommend everyone that you should stay at your current company until you get that approval. Now, there's a way that you can actually expedite, expedite this entire process, and that's called premium processing. You pay an additional fee to the government and they will process your documents earlier than anyone else's. And they have a obligated 15 day period where they have to respond within 15 days, or I think they give you money back or something like that. I don't know. I don't think they'll ever give you their money back, but they will, they're obligated to respond within 15 days. And then you get to find out if you're on RFE or you get approved. If you get RFE, you still are on that premium processing lane. So if as soon as you uh, refile your additional documents, they will also do a premium processing on the RFE documents and try to give you a, an answer as soon as possible. So some companies are very generous in doing, giving you the premium processing. I had to ask my employer and they were very generous and they also gave me premium processing for this new job. In some cases, I heard that people will personally fund their own um, premium processing fee this can, I'm not really sure what the fee is. I heard it was a couple, maybe a thousand dollars or maybe a couple thousand dollars. And because 
you know, you don't want to start working on receipt, the employer might say, hey, we filed for you, so just start working for us. Like, we'll get you covered if you get an RFE. But the problem is, the company can't cover for you if you get an RFE. They, they have really no power over what they can do after they get an RFE and get the denial, right? It's best of your interest to keep your job and make sure that you can maintain your immigration status or your work status here in the United States. You are the only person that should care about yourself. Like nobody else will care about you as much as you would. Like if you get denial, they'll be like, oh, sorry. Well then, I guess this is it. You should always care for yourself first. If they keep pushing that you start working, tell, let them know about your situation and that your concerns where you have a chance that you might get a RFE or maybe a possible denials. I guess there's a last part where you might have been fired or laid off from your current company. You will have 60 days grace period from the government to stay in the country and you can find a new job. Now, if you do find a new job and they file for your H-1B petition, in that situation, I think it makes sense to just start working because you kind of have to, right? And on receipt, even before you get your approval. So that's like the only way if you want to stay in the United States. If you do not find a job within the 60 days that the government said, then you have to go back to your home country, which is like the most unfortunate path that I can think of in this situations. If you are laid off or fired, try to find a job as soon as possible and you should start working right away if they file your H-1B petition right away without waiting for approval or denial because that's the only option you have if you want to stay in the United States. Otherwise, you have to leave the country. So those are the options. But if you're not in that situation, you should always wait for an approval. I heard, this is like a very, very rare case, but I heard that they were cases where some people got denial right away without even getting an RFE. So I think that's a very extreme case, but there are articles that I found online that this did happen to some people. So as long as you have a, you know, a valid school degree and that you can prove that your job and your education are related, I don't think you'll have much issues with the job uh, H-1B transfer process. If you have any questions around this, um, you can ask me, I'll just then again, this is all my personal experience. This, these are not legal advice that I'm giving you. I'm just trying to share as much as possible on what my experience was like and what I heard about other people and some articles that I read about while I was um, doing this entire process. If you thought this video was helpful, please hit that like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.